I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they can be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. I saw in the news today something not related to all the other horrifying stuff happening. Um, I saw in the news today that Kenny Rogers died. Wait, the, the no one to hold him, no one to fold him guy? Yeah, the gambler. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What'd he die of? Natural causes. That's somewhat dubious. Well, he was up there. He he was 81. He was 81. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I, I so don't... It might be actual natural causes. Okay. I think it was actual natural causes, but... I will say, uh, for country musicians, don't hate him. I don't hate him. Yeah, he was not the worst. He had some solid stuff. I mean, the gambler is just a fucking masterpiece. Yeah, no, they're good. And um, so uh, corners for um, so one not real doctors, they're voted into uh, office. So like you <laughs> I don't have a to. Anyone can be a coroner. You just have to be voted in. But um, as far as um, drug overdose in that, they typically say natural causes. Yes. Um, yeah. That's a super common thing. So that's why my first question was, was it really natural causes? But no, he, he was 81. Yeah. 81 means probably natural causes. Yeah. Look Statistically. At, he, he held up really well. Look at I'm Oh, no. So I just he... Googled him. He looked so good. He got... He was one of those guys that looked better the older he got. And I'm well, trying to be that as hard as I can. <laughs> well, he's one of those guys who mi- hit max level in terms of how old he looks. Yeah. And then just stayed there. Kind of like, uh, uh, what's his name? Christopher uh, Patrick- Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd, Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Uh, Steve Martin. Is he dead now? I think he might be No. Dead no. Okay. No. Steve Martin. Who's the no. one who... The one who died, who's basically Steve Martin, but different. Can we right now start a suicide pact with uh, so that whenever Steve Martin dies, that it's all over? I don't want to. I mean, that's... you don't have to want to. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little worried about that. It's Steve Martin. Uh, well, I mean, we already lost. Who else did we? We lost somebody. Uh, oh, Gene Wilder. Neal still good. Huh? We lost Gene Wilder. But is that was Leslie Neal, like the guy from Smoking Gun, is he still uh, still <laughs> around? Brandon. I mean, this is just the uh, the We Rapidly Google show. Um, what? Who are you talking about? Uh, Naked Gun. Sorry. Naked Gun. Yeah. Oh, he's dead. Oh, Leslie Nielsen. Oh, John. Can we just start a suicide pact right now? I yes. don't want to. I don't please, want to. Please, this the naked gun. I mean, is life worth living without any more naked guns? I mean, wait, did he die? Yeah, he did die. Actually, ah! Brandon, Brandon, um, I got some news for you. Sorry, don't tell me about Michael Jackson, John. <laughs> Brandon, John, it was ten years ago that he died. No. No! Wait! I'm actually just hearing this now and noticing I have to turn my levels down a little bit. Brandon, Leslie Nielsen's been dead for 10 years. No! John! No! He was so good, though! He was so good! He was actually really funny. He was the best part of Scary Movie 3. Oh, Scary Movie 3. My grandfather had, um, it was a bunch of fake deer hunting videos. Mm -hmm. It's, oh. I actually really liked Scary Movie 3. And then it went bad after that. Like, that was the last, like, funny one, in my opinion. Um, there was one scene in the movie that I just absolutely love. 
and I don't I don't remember if it was like I think it was a deleted scene, but they had a, the shovels, and somebody took the shovel and cocked the shovel, in a, <laughs> and a, yes. a shell popped out. <laughs> and I don't know why, but that's still one of the like funnier moments of any movie for me. Wait, was Dewey in it? Oh boy, these movies are old. I'm old. There's we're all old. We have to accept it. 2003 is when it came out. Wow. Better than the first two, like, duh, but the hit-miss ratio is still alarmingly lopsided. <laughs> I'm a little worried about what you're Googling. Oh, no, I'm tweeting um, that oh. I just learned what happened to Leslie Nielsen. <laughs> 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 Listen, I'm shook. That's actually a really, really phenomenal picture. <laughs> the um, um, at Crypto Brandon on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, you see this picture. It's pretty good. I. It, it's funny because there's just me sitting there laughing at your realization. <laughs> yes, and reveling in your pain because that's what I do. The um. Oh, what was the thing I was going to talk about? Uh, the so I saw Creep Two finally yes, on Netflix. How'd that go? Uh, a unsettling movie. Fair. Both of them are very unsettling, and it took turns that I was not expecting. How? How? How so? Yeah. I mean, uh, spoiler alert for Creep Two. But, like, in the first, like, ten minutes when, like, the dude hangs Dong? Uh, I didn't see that. Oh, well, I okay. I didn't see the movie. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, in the first, like, ten minutes of Creep 2, the dude hangs Dong. And then the girl gets naked, too. Oh, okay. But they, they do this thing where they, they pan the camera up so they don't, like, show anything. Mm-hmm. But the dude... Uh, it's the guy from uh, the league. You see his penis for a solid like. Uh, Which I'd guy? Say two minutes. Uh, the let me see. Let me pull up the league. Okay. <laughs> because it's not. I know who you're thinking of, and it's not him. Is it the 911 guy or the um, better place guy? Might be the 911 guy. Uh. Mark Duplass, I think. So I can't... Yeah, that, that's who it is. I think that's the 911 guy. No. Is it? He also has a podcast I like, where he just reads books. Oh, wait. No, that's not him. Um, No, it's uh, Mark Duplass. So this guy. Uh, You get to see his penis in the movie. Oh, for a while. Oh, like, him. Like, like a uh, pretty... Uh, a pretty unobstructed view of it, too. <laughs> For I mean, a while. nice. Fair enough. Um, Not gonna he's complain. Also, he's also a phenomenally horrifying. Um, he's a phenomenally horrifying horror actor. Like that, he has a really good face. I can picture that yeah. very well. <laughs> he is a phenomenal horror actor. Like. Anything that he's in for the future for horror, I'll definitely watch. Especially, like, just in genre film in general. Um, yeah. Because it was legitimately horrifying. Legitimately horrifying. Uh, But, yeah. Uh, let's see. Rip Legend. Oh, it's probably for Kenny. Yeah, it's Kenny Long Rogers. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. All right. I think we've filled enough air. Oh, what maybe. What? What is this? Uh, oh, oh no, Brandon, Brandon. Uh oh. So this is the music video for the gambler. And I'm horrified right now. Oh, what? What? Oh, what? no. What? It gets wild. It gets wild at the 40-second mark. The, the guy literally 
literally leaves his body. Oh, wait. Uh, uh, oh, no. Oh, oh, this is this is like elder horror stuff. Oh. That's crazy. Oh, oh, God. This is what nightmares are made out of. Oh, it's absolutely nightmare fuel. I'm putting this in the show notes because if you haven't seen it, good Lord. Good lord, that's that's horrifying. It's like if the Muppets were scarier. Because it's like it's like a puppet head on a human's body and the legs are way too long. There's nothing good about this. No. Oh, this is this is not okay. There's nothing good about this at there is, all. There is nothing good about this whatsoever. I am... I'm experiencing my own person... Okay, okay. 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 <laughs> I guess we'll do the podcast. I so, guess. I don't know if it's possible to do the podcast after seeing that. Because whatever I'm about to talk to you about is not going to be anywhere near as horrifying or funny. Whatsoever. Um, So... Uh, this week's, oh, wait, before we do that, I gotta tell everyone what the podcast is. Yeah, what, 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 what is it? What do we do? I guess we're Cryptopedia. We talk about stuff that isn't related to the stuff we talk about. So, I guess we talk about everything. We talk about lots of stuff. We talk about lots of stuff. Uh, usually we talk about cryptids, though. Uh, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And this week's cryptid was first sighted in 2016, Brandon. Ooh, okay. New. This is I think this is the most recent cryptid that I, John, have covered for this podcast. We have a new boy. Yeah, it's it's rare for me to do them that are this new. Uh also pretty interesting is there's like we'll, we'll get into it in the in the episode. Um the taxonomy is river monster. Okay. And its region is Alaska. Oh, is this oh, this isn't a uh, a worm type. Is it? Okay, so... Kind of. Kind of, okay. Kind of. So they're... Uh, I'd say more like a lamprey than a uh, a worm. Okay. Um, then I'll call it the... Um, let's see. The Kodiak Killer Worm. The Kodiak Killer Worm. Yes. I mean... Kodiak Killer would be a good name for a monster, too. Just it would in general. Be. Just in general. Uh, no, this is... Okay, so this was suggested by Clay Sinclair on our oh, Discord. Oh, okay. Uh, it is the... He called it the Alaskan Ice Monster. Uh, what I found was a lot of people call it the Chena River Ice Monster. Okay. 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 Uh, it's a it's an interesting story. It's a compelling story. We'll just say. Uh, I also didn't think that I was going to have enough for a full episode about it, but it ended up working. So how about oh, that? Perfect. All right. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm I'm actually very happy that it worked out. So uh, let's take a trip to the Chena River, October 2016, Brandon. Okay. I don't want to, but we'll do it. No, no, you don't because of where it's located. It's actually located in a terrible location. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so October 2016 An employee of the Alaskan Bureau of Land Management Craig McCann Took a break from work During his break he went to the Chena River Near Fairbanks Oh yep Let me let me let's cut this whole section out And let's just restart from the October bit <laughs> uh, One sec There we go I got Tell it I get it I'm also pulling up something else. Okay. So let's let's just kind of like let's maybe... pretend we didn't just share the copy. <laughs> yes. Let's pretend that didn't just happen. Um also that's the location of Fairbanks, Alaska. I just popped it in. Oh, there. okay. So in October twenty sixteen, an employee of the Alaskan Bureau of Land Management, Craig McCann. McCann, McCain? Uh, you know uh, what? I, I know. I heard his name pronounced in a video, and then I completely forgot it because that's just the way my brain works. Okay, this is smack dab in the middle of Alaska, by oh, the way. Oh yes, yes, it is like, 
it's like I I just opened the Google Maps. Um, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like basically middle of Alaska. Yeah, uh, it's close to a place called North Pole for whatever that for whatever that's worth. Uh, and you can travel to Anchorage from there. Okay. Uh, I think it's a. Let's see how long it takes. Uh, six hours and thirty two minutes driving. <laughs> Oh jeez! So it's three hundred and fifty nine miles away from Anchorage. Um, anywho, back to the story. So Craig McCann took a break from work. During his break, he went to the Chena River near Fairbanks, Alaska, to take photos of the ice starting to build up for the winter, because I guess that's what people in Alaska do. Take pictures of ice. Yeah, I mean it's pretty. I guess. Yeah. No, I mean it's October too, so you know, it's still you know, above zero C. No, not yeah. zero C. Uh zero Fahrenheit. Wait, thirty two is freezing Fahrenheit. Yeah, so zero it's above zero. Z. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So it's above zero Fahrenheit. So you know, it's it's still balmy at that time of year in Alaska. Yeah. You know? Um so when w- looking down from the bridge, McCann was startled to see something moving in the river. The object in question was a fairly long entity undulating and rolling through the river upstream. It was coated in ice, and little detail could be seen below the water due to murkiness. Some have described the motion as alligator-like, with the head leading the body. But I should also note, that's how a lot of fish move, too, so whatever. Um, Yeah. (laughs) In a side-to-side manner. The video in question was posted to the Bureau of Land Management Alaska's Facebook page and clocks in about 20 seconds. Brandon, could you click that link and describe to our listeners what this video kind of looks like a little bit? Let's see. It looks a lot like. Let's see. So this it looks video looks a lot like garbage, just water garbage. Yeah, uh, it was posted on October twenty sixth, twenty sixteen. Um, so it's not actually moving, and I'd like to point that out right now that it there's no forward movement. It's a thing in water that's stuck basically and in, in kind of w- wiggling with the uh, with the current. Hey, hey Brandon. But, Brandon. Yeah. Brandon? How about you don't completely throw the story into the trash? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> like you blow it up the, the spot. Ripples, but that's the current moving against it. It's not. There's no actual. F- okay. <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> yeah. Brandon. Yeah. You just skipped like five pages of story. Wait, no. Let's pretend Brandon didn't say that. <laughs> God damn it. Oh. So, instantly, the video is sensationalized. Some clo- the locals uh, some locals claim the creature to be mythological. Many begin to wonder if it's a cousin to the Loch Ness Monster. Sure, it's the garbage cousin. I'll call yeah. it river garbage. <sighs> the garbage cousin, yeah. Uh, unsurprisingly, the video appears to be the only evidence of the creature, and no other witnesses have come forward, even to this day. Uh, it should also be noted that McCann went back to the river after leaving it, and it was gone. Okay. Uh, so, let's do some video analysis, because I found a strange evidence video that took it very seriously. It didn't just come up with the answer in five seconds. <laughs> Oh, okay. So in a strange evidence segment on the Science Channel, William M. Okay, so I don't know how I'm going to pronounce this name. I'm going to do it wrong. There's a link to the episode in the show notes. Uh, William N. Draginus? Draginus. Yeah, that seems right. Draginus? There's a double I in there. I, I think it's I think it's supposed to be like Irish. Draginus? Okay. I wonder if there's like a really high Irish population in this area. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Fair enough. <laughs> um, he performs a step-by-step analysis of the video. Uh, he also, I forget what it, they, they said he was working for, but basically they said he was a video like analysis expert is what they said. Um, so the river in the video is determined to be 55 feet wide. Through the use of image anal- analysis techniques, they determined that the creature is roughly 10 feet long. So this metric eliminates any known lamprey from the explanation. However, however, sturgeon and shark are still distinctly possible. Now, sharks are weird when it comes to rivers. Uh, I literally just listened to a dollop 210 about sharks. 
and there was like one that showed up like 20 miles inland in... wait is this the in new jersey yeah in new jersey yeah that was a good one yeah that was the one where people found out that sharks are dangerous yeah which can i just say i'm horrified that it took that long for humans to figure out that sharks are dangerous <laughs> <laughs> they're literally just mouths of teeth yeah it's all they like, are water like, teeth they're just they're wa- water teeth they're teeth with scales that hurt you if you touch them mm-hmm. like what <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know maybe this is always one of those things where it's like maybe just the wisdom of time and the fact that jaws exist uh colors my opinion on that and my like understanding of that yeah. But I also feel like if I saw a shark's maw in person, I'd be a little scared. Yeah. Just, I'd be more than a little scared. Yeah. yeah. It the the store that that dollop is so funny too cuz like the explanations they came up with were so stupid. And not only that, but they started talking about using TNT in water like near where swimmers were, and I'm just like you're just going to kill swimmers. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so in fact, one theory described in the strange evidence episode is that it is in fact a Greenland shark. Um, no. I don't know what, how I wrote that sentence, but it, it has in fact twice. No, Greenland sharks are big. They're big. And don't They're, look like that. They clock in around eight to 15 feet long. So in terms of length, it would match. However, in terms of looking like a Greenland shark kind of fails. And even if we assume that it might be a Dreamland shark, a little research told me two things that I think this theory is bunk. Oh, this is okay. not even this is not relating whatsoever to whether or not it looks like a Greenland shark. First, the Greenland shark is not a, endemic at all to the Alaskan coast. No, some would say it lives closer to Greenland. Yes, it's a it's an Atlantic shark. It's not... also a very it's an extremely deep water shark, so yes. it wouldn't be seen really towards the surface of the water like yes. this is. Yeah. Uh, second and more importantly, Fairbanks, as you've mentioned before, Brandon, is landlocked. Oh god. <laughs> and not just kind of landlocked. A brief trace of the river to the sea indicates that the waterway only connects to the ocean on the west coast of the state. And Fairbanks itself is more or less in the middle. Now, Brandon, (laughs) for people who don't remember what Alaska looks like, Alaska's like the size of the U.S., like the continental U.S. It's big. It's It's really big. not tiny. It's really big. Uh, And not only that, but uh, the close, like Anchorage is the closest, like, port to Fairbanks. And that's already six hours and 32 minutes away by driving my car. Um. So I learned something about Google Maps. What's that? I tried to get a rough estimate. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I tried to get a rough estimate of how far away that was by plugging in Fairbanks and one of the towns the rivers run through on the coast. And it turns out uh, Google Maps has routes that it can't calculate. <laughs> oh, okay. So I tried to do a by car, by... by uh, Walking, by biking, everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it gave me a, sorry, we could not calculate walking directions from Fairbanks, Alaska to Noom Iqua, Alaska. Noom Iqua. Yeah. And I was just like, what? There was like a joke thing about like taking, like swimming across the Atlantic Ocean that I remember. Yeah. So. (laughs) I'm just like. What? What? Uh, I then plugged in the the flight itinerary for how long it would take. Eight hours. Oh, Oh, okay. So I'm going to go out on a limb, Brandon. Yeah. And I'm going to say it's very, 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 very unlikely that a shark swam to Fairbanks, Alaska. That is an understatement. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Very unlikely. Now. That is to say, Alaska is huge and frequently impossible to navigate terrestrially, and as I said before, extremely unlikely for a shark to make it. 
Infuriatingly, the episode offers no additional explanations of the creature, pausing that it could be an undiscovered species of lamprey or something else. Basically, it could be anything. Yeah, or river garbage. Or river garbage, yeah. Uh, the, I, I really love it when there's, like, so I watched this whole, I, I, try, I tried to watch the whole episode, but there were so many ads mm-hmm. that made it, like, oh, really frustrating yeah. to watch it. Um, it turns out Strange Evidence is, like, a bunch of small se- segments, and they're, like, all about, like, 10-ish minutes long, roughly. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was also another one about lightning strikes about, that cu- it came out of nowhere. But when I watched the video, it just looked like a normal lightning strike. Um, I feel like this kind of television is very lazy. Yeah. Well, a lot of the um, here's a weird thing shows are very they're mo- they're ninety percent fluff. It's all they're mostly fluff. Well, okay, so. Let me one sec. Let me pull up the strange evidence video because I have I have the link to the full episode in the show notes, but there's one on Facebook um, that I found. Mm-hmm. So here's a quick link to the Science Channel Facebook page, and I just want you to watch a little bit of this, not all of it, just a little, because um, the like the the scene transitions for it are insanity, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Like it'll oh, yeah. be obvious really quick. Really quick, like in the first ten seconds. So, yeah, no, they're all like the um. How do I describe it? Like the they try to make it look like old TV, mm-hmm. radio static, almost switching back and forth with the red and green. Um, like if you ever wore the old school like three D glasses. Yes, that yes. sort of outline around everything. Well, and they also yeah. add like they add scan lines, like CRT scan lines to yes. everything too. Yes, which is bonkers. Um, and for whatever reason, they keep showing security cameras in the transitions. Yeah. Every segment was like that, by the way. Literally every segment. Oh, um, God. Yeah. So it's a I, – I watched it, and I was very excited because I was like, oh, cool, something that I can watch and talk about mm. because finding stuff to read about this is literally all the same three articles. Yeah. Uh, because that's just – how this thing goes Look at this are you actually are you still watching it oh yeah no i'm watching it still <laughs> yeah also i i think we've i we didn't mention this um in the original video that was posted to the bureau of land management alaska they mm-hmm. added this weird like recording overlay to it <laughs> that had like like a red recording dot and then like a camera <laughs> with like a mostly unfull battery and then like the little camera thing and it's like all right first of all this is a digital camera what you've laid over this is not a digital camera yeah second of all it's ridiculous uh like 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 like, this is the 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 framing thing Mm -hmm. that's there because you're supposed to when you're filming the like white boxes on the Mm -hmm. outside is basically like your safe zone where you're guaranteed that it's not going to get cut off if you try to edit it that's the point of that it doesn't make yeah. it into the final video. <laughs> no. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. I hate... That is my biggest pet peeve every time I see that. Because I remember... Because um, back in high school, I really wanted to get into film, right? And I remember these things because I cared about them because I was trying to get into a film program at RIT. Yeah. So it's kind of like when I watch this this kind of stuff, I'm just like, what are you guys doing? Like, what are you doing? Who is this for? <laughs> um, this but guy is watching everything on the smallest laptop possible. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the other thing, too, is this was released two years ago in 2018. Okay. So there's no good reason for have, having a laptop that small. No. 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 It, it's what – is, what is it, actually? Oh, his name was Dran Guinness, by the way. Also, okay – so, I want to pause for a second here, Brandon. Okay. So, we're in this room, right? This this guy is st- has his... So, he has a laptop on top of a clamshell case thing, right? One of those, like... Um, yeah. Uh, utility cases, what have mm-hmm. you. He has a second laptop that has the same video open directly to his left. Yes. He then has a third monitor in the background that has the same video open. 
Because it's research. <laughs> Brad, it is a 20-second video. Yeah. Oh, and they called him a uh, senior science technologist, just, just to get that out of there. Um, I, I would also like to point out that each of the videos are at a different point in time in the recording. So, like, they all show different frames. Oh, yes. They all show yeah. different frames, which is, like, what? Like, at least, like, because it looks like they're using, what program are they using for this? It looks like a, a VLC-type program to yeah. me. Uh, yeah, that looks vaguely VLC-ish. Um, I think you can actually, like, double-click on the, the little timer and type in the time that you want to go to. Mm -hmm. So, like, you could literally make them all lined up. Yeah. Or no, or, that's intentional. This is a uh, we shot this for TV. Let's put all the mon all of the tiniest monitors in a room with this guy well, and put them at all different times to watch this video. Well, but my favorite thing too is so there's no reason for this this scene to have a background in the first place, right? Like no. this literally this literally could have been him sitting at a black in a black room with a laptop or a monitor and pointing to the monitor. Yeah. Like that's literally what this could have been, right? Mm -hmm. Um. I know, I know we're talking about a visual medium thing here, guys, but I really need to talk about this because it really bugged me. <laughs> um, There's so, also two other monitors that you can't see what's on the screen, but I yes! suspect... Okay. <laughs> yes, there's two blank monitors with a red light in the corner. I hit my mic. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's two red monitors in the corner, and then there's just a bunch of lights on in this room. Yeah. And you know what's even worse, Brandon? He's not even using software for vis video analysis to do this. He's using VLC or something of that ilk. He's using yeah. a video playback thing that you watch anime on or yeah. something along those lines. It's just like, what is this video? Who are they trying to, to, to trick with this? And like, all I can think is, man, Science Channel, where have you gone? What have you become? <laughs> Where have you gone? What have you become? Um, this this video, this whole thing is just great. Uh, I should, I'll, I'll post a link to the Facebook one that doesn't have all the ads too, in our show notes. But it's 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 worth watching just for the mm -hmm. sake of like what is going on. Of course, if you're watching and after listening to this video, it's going to be kind of anticlimactic. But whatever. <laughs> It's not like they get to a climax anyways. Because I want to point out, Brandon, yeah. uh, the official theory for what happened came oh. out like literally the same month as this thing. And this is two yeah. years. This 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 Science Channel thing came out two years after that was already announced. And they oh, don't God. mention it. Oh. <laughs> they don't mention it once in the video. Yeah. Which is extremely... I'm going to say that it's extremely, extraordinarily, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, dishonest? Yeah. Very much so. Like, come on, people. <laughs> Anywho. So, before you read the sources or listen to Brandon, mm -hmm. um, and spoil this episode for yourself, because it's already spoiled. <laughs> Brandon, Brandon ruined this episode. He, he completely... He stole all the thunder from me, and quite frankly, I'm upset, but whatever. We'll deal with it. Uh, let's take a look at the possible mythological explanations for this entity. Now, turns out uh, my ability to look up Inuit religion is a lot worse than my ability to look up uh, other indigenous people's religion, like, like mythologies and religions. Mm -hmm. um, and I think part of that might be because, like, People just kind of ignored them. <laughs> Literally what I think happened. Uh, if you listen to the dollop episode, they kind of like, there's a dollop episode about what they did to the Inuits and it's absolutely horrifying. Like it makes, it makes every, everything we do to indigenous people sucks. Yeah. I'm just going to say that right now. Uh, this in particular sucks pretty hard. Uh, but that's not this episode. So, from what I found, the most likely candidate, and this is me, like, literally taking a shape and cramming something into it. Like, it's like a, a square peg round hole. Uh, 
the most likely candidate for the Chino River Monster is the, and I have no idea how I'm going to pronounce this, but the Tizeric. The Tizeric, Tizeric, is a sea-based creature said to have a seven-foot head and a tail with a flipper. According to the legend, the creature is known for its penchant in taking people off piers. This is likely an explanation for people slipping off ice, like if you, you know, mm. whatever. Uh, that being said, it's generally stated to be sea-bound, and as stated, the path from the sea to Fairbanks is a bit long. Additionally, it's more found near the Anchorage area, and there's no waterway from Anchorage to Fairbanks. So unless someone free willied that shit. <laughs> yes. Honestly, um, I think I think a lot more of uh, there's a lot of interesting uh, explanations that can be had. Just saying it was a free willy situation. Mm-hmm. Just, just putting that out there. They free willied it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's also a fair amount of journalism drawing comparisons to the Loch Ness monster and the Chena River monster, as I mentioned before. Most notably, the British tabloid Mirror featured an article with a flashy headline claiming just that. Actually reading the article, however, there's no substance to the article. It's about two paragraphs long, and it has literally no critical lens on the uh, events, except maybe Nessie's there. (laughs) It might be. It might be Nessie. Hey, hey, Brandon. Yeah? It might be. It's probably Nessie. We're just asking questions, Brandon. We are. I'm just asking questions. That's all I'm doing. I'm just asking questions. There's nothing wrong with me asking questions. I'm just asking questions. Just asking questions. Well, stop it. Inquiring minds want to know. No, we don't. Uh, In contrast, however, the sun did actually remarkably a much better schlocky take on the sighting. Like, there was actually more content to it, which surprised me. (laughs) Because it's the sun. (laughs) <laughs> I mean that's fair. Um so they reported on most of the insane theories of the creature and my two favorites are Beaver Gator. Okay. Which is I like great. It. Which is great. I, I like want, it. I want to be I want So I'm thinking of uh from South Park, you know how they depicted God as like the the platypus looking thing? Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking something that looks kind of like that mixed with uh the soul devourer from Egyptian mythology. That's my, okay. In, that's my view of what a beaver gator looks like. Yeah. It's horrifying. Um, Oh, the other thing, uh, I'm also imagining, uh, that one SCP that's really hard to kill. Uh, what, not the doll, not the doll. The, uh, the SCP, um, what is it? 619. No SCP. Cause the doll was scary. The obelisk was scary. All the SCPs are pretty good. I like them. They kind of get a little bit after you get after you get past a thousand, they get a little weird. Uh, six eight two. That's who I'm thinking of. SCP six eight two. Uh, let me just send you a really quick picture. Do, do, do. That is SCP six eight two. Um, that's when I read Beaver Gator. That picture popped into my head. Oh instantly. yes. That is. I want to just say that is such a good picture. Yeah. Like, such a good picture. I, I'm pretty sure that it's a picture of a whale decaying, but like. In terms of, like, spooky, that's pretty much my go-to for in- envisioning something yeah. that's just, like, horrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, or anything that's, like, got a long snoot and teeth and what have you. It's uh, really good. Anywho, the other hypothesis theory posited was yeah. zombie salmon. Zombie salmon. I and like it. I love Let's that. Let's go down this rabbit hole because it's way I love it. Brandon, we're about to go down that rabbit hole. Don't worry because it's great. <laughs> um hilariously, there's a reference to a sane theory in the Sun article and they actually they actually explain what it is in the Sun article. Wait. They do. I'm not going to talk about that yet because I want to talk about zombie salmon before we get there. But um, their description of the scientist is phenomenal. However, spoil sword and professional biologist Klaus Wudig, the science boffin who works for the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. The science boffin. 
The science boffin. All right. I like it. What's a boffin? A boffin? I, I yeah. think it's like a stupid person or a like a. It's a it's it's English slang. Uh. Oh. Okay, a person engaged in scientific or technical research. I guess I was completely wrong. Basically, basically, it's someone who's intelligent and good at something. So he's a sci- I guess it's a compliment. Yeah. But I had the feeling it's written not as a compliment. <laughs> it could be. I don't think it was written as a compliment. Like, let's be real. You, you don't write science boffin, like, and just, you know, whatever. Um, incidentally, because of this whole zombie salmon thing, I learned something because of the sun. Oh, uh, okay. I actually am not happy about that. Let me just be honest. Um, it turns no out be. that there is in fact something called a zombie fish. Uh, what's that? It's Continue. real. It's real. It's real. So zombie zombie salmon are not exactly zombies, but they're real. Like the whole concept of them. So the US Fish and Wildlife Service has a hilarious two part video series about something called zombie fish. Uh, the first is just an absolutely amazing video of a post spawn so- salmon. And Brandon, mm-hmm. uh, click the first link in the, the post spawn salmon link and just open that up. It's a YouTube video. Uh, this yes. is going to be in the show notes. Watch it. People it's out there, long. watch it. It's only a minute long. It's great. Zombie fish. The swimming dead. Yes. My favorite thing about it is the, it's like, um, it's, it's clearly, uh, Microsoft movie maker. Oh, is it? Yeah. Like, like clearly the font I've definitely seen. I'm pretty sure. What is that font? That, that, that looks a little bit like, I. it's a, it's a default windows goofy font. Um, so this video shows post-spawn salmon, and now, yeah. for those of you who don't know, Pacific salmon, after they spawn, die. Um, however, before they die, they stay alive for a little bit, and they get these fungal growths on their bodies, uh, yeah. and they defend their nests. Uh, in this particular video, however, they've edited it to add zombie sounds <laughs> they did. to video so footage. Good. Of these post-spawn salmon, and I love it. It's hilarious, but it gets even better because there's a second ep- there's a second video from Mark Ahrens of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service that actually does like a whole explanation of what it is, and he doesn't break character and he calls them zombie fish during the entirety of it. <laughs> like this, this person. I'm just so happy that they exist. I'm ha- I'm happy that these As two, should be. These two videos existing gives my life a new meaning that I wasn't expecting it to. <laughs> okay, that might be an overstatement, but okay. No, it's not. It's it's completely no. it's completely accurate. Um but it's really cool. Uh and so basically, let me just distill the second video down. So mm. after salmon spawn, they will defend their nests and their bodies will stop healing wounds, resulting in fungal growth and making the salmon literally look like they're rotting to the bone. The fish eventually die, and their nutrients are then returned to the food web. Mm-hmm. So it's actually a really, like, interesting process that's a part of the end of the salmon, like, natural lifespan. Uh, and, you know, I knew that salmon, like Pacific salmon, Atlantic salmon and say alive, um, Pacific salmon, I knew that they died, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I never knew that it was, like, this whole process... And I just assume that they just drop dead. But instead, it's like this, like, their last instinct is just to defend their young, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, and no, they're then, badass. No, it's it's pretty cool. However, unfortunately, this likely has nothing to do with the Chena River monster outside of being the correct time of the year. However, it's an interesting piece of strangeness that fills the, war- the world. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any stories about beaver gators. No beaver gators, okay. <laughs> um, I did find one image of a beaver, beaver gator, I think. Uh, there was one thing that I found that was a little upsetting, and I'm, uh, mm-hmm. I was looking up the the soul eater from, 
uh, from sorry i just typed from beaver Soul gator Eater? in and i'm now I, I went to the shopping page of beaver Ge beaver gator and <laughs> that was the first hit oh no <laughs> no <laughs> that person is an arsonist i could tell you that right now <laughs> oh no oh they're definitely they're definitely a criminal there's no doubt yeah. that person is a criminal at the very least um <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just really funny. It's a really funny picture. It's a man in a in a gator suit. Just I don't even know what he's doing. Like, what would you describe that as? It looks like he's walking, um, but nobody walks like that. It's a jig. It's some form of jig. It does look like jig. it looks like he's mid jig. We'll say. Yeah. So Brandon. What was yeah. it? What it, what was it? Uh, river garbage. Okay. I'm so, I'm still hard on river garbage, for where, sure. Where does that leave us? This is a little bit of a shorter episode, folks. But whatever. Um. So where does that leave us? It's an unlike. Is it an unlikely to undiscovered species of land? I can't speak this week. That's uh, fine. Is it an unlikely discovered, undiscovered species of lamprey that's huge? Uh, I guess it's a Pokemon at that point, because isn't that a gorefish or whatever? Whatever. Uh, oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. An alligator out due to the freezing water temperature? Um, You know, I didn't read my st my sentence right. Okay. So I, what I meant to say is it's unlikely to be a lamprey, and it's unlikely to be an alligator, because if it was an alligator, it'd be dead, because the water was freezing. Um, <laughs> both surgeon and shark are also likely out, given the land lakes, landlocked status of Fairbanks. The video itself was compelling the first time I saw it. Mm -hmm. uh, the second time I saw it, not so much, but I was kind of a little bit like, oh, wow, that actually looks kind of cool. Um, of course, Brandon, Brandon was not... Brandon has no sense of wonder. Apparently. <laughs> that's fair. Like, honestly, that's the only explanation of how I, how you figured it out, how you, how you realized what was happening so quickly, because <laughs> I watched it and I was just like, wow, this is compelling. Mm -hmm. It's probably not real, but it's compelling. Yeah. Meanwhile, totally you, understandable. meanwhile, you are just like, it's this. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm sad. Yeah. I'm just sad. That's all I'm going to say. So, regardless of wow factor, however, this video is unlikely to be a living creature, as Brandon said, literally as soon as the podcast started. <laughs> um, the ice on it is pretty much a dead giveaway, because I personally don't know of any creature that can sustain life while being coated in ice in the water. Uh, the added weight alone would disturb the swim bladders of most fish, and certainly have an impact on the buoyancy of mammals and reptiles. Revealing the video... Mm -hmm. The creature doesn't appear to actually be moving because <laughs> the head of the creature stays level with the shadow of the bridge. <laughs> if you watch the head, uh, you can see that doesn't make any headway upstream, and the motion of the camera gives the illusion of forward momentum when it is, in fact, stationary. Continuing to examine the video with this in mind, you also can begin to see that the head almost appears to be connected to something in front of it. So remember Brandon at the beginning of the episode or <laughs> or Klaus Wudig, the boffin scientist from Al the Alaska Greek Department of Fish and Game? Turns out his spoil sport theory is most likely the most rational. In his theory, the creature is in fact a rope stuck to the bridge. <laughs> it was river garbage the whole time. Frazzle ice, the slushy ice that forms on the water surface, probably formed on the rope and caused it to float to the surface. It looked pretty cool, though, right? You, oh, oh, it looked super cool. It's totally understandable how people could watch the video and go, oh, shit, this is some crazy stuff. Oh, no, it was definitely a full episode's worth of... It was a, it was worth an episode, because it yeah. was cool. It was legitimately yeah. cool looking. It was really cool. It was compelling. Like, if... Yeah. No, it, like, it just looked cool. Like, there's even a bit 
in the video where like one of like another piece of so what I think happened was there was two the rope was kind of like looped a little bit and there it looks like there's a piece of like a, a pectoral fin coming up out of the water at mm. one point which is cool and not only that but like the the ice underneath the water because the water's so murky almost looks like a reptile flesh tone mm-hmm. so it's kind of like oh I could conceivably see this as being a uh, plesiosaur mosasaurus alligator fill in whatever you want to call it right mm-hmm. but when you rewatch it <laughs> and you think about the fact that oh it's just a bunch of flows of ice connected together by a rope it's a little less magical. It's the magic's gone, but especially in the video when they zoom in on it, right? So you lose the context of the shadows and the other parts of the environment around it when it's just close up of the creature. Yeah. How it's going with the water flow. Like it looks so much like it's a creature moving on its own, like under its own. Like it looks, it's very convincing when you well, remove the context of the the environment around it. Yes. Removing all the context, it, is extremely convincing. It's it looks like something slowly meandering through the water. Yeah. It really does. Like I am not going to lie. The first time I looked at it I was like, "Huh, is that like a sturgeon?" Cuz that was my yeah. first thought. I legitimately thought like, "Oh, maybe it's some kind of fish that just has is attached to ice somehow?" Cuz it looked yeah. it looked like legitimate motion. Right? Yeah. Like but it's a really good like S wiggle. I don't know what to call that kind of um movement, but like an S serpentine. wiggle. Serpentine. Serpentine. Yeah, serpentine. All right. Serpentine is the best Babu! Like... <laughs> From... <laughs> You got it. <laughs> From Archer. Serpentine. <laughs> and then he pees on everything. Because ocelots are not good pets. It turns out. Has anyone watched Archer recently? No. I loved Archer, but it was such a good show. Once once they got into like the weirder like so after after they stopped being spies, it got weird. I liked it though. No, I liked it after they stopped being spies, but they started doing like themed seasons. Right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And um basically basically because ISIS was the thing, it ruined it. Yeah, that's true. I had an Archer ringtone for a while. Uh, yeah, time. what was it? Uh, Mulatto Butts? Uh, yes, yeah, it I was. Believe. It was I Mulatto Butts. I believe, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah. you, was, and you are not. I am not, <laughs> because I heard it on multiple occasions. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't the only person. The IT guy had the same ringtone. <laughs> Well, to be fair, it's it's a good ringtone. It is. It's a good it's a good bit. I think it I think it changes during the series too. Oh, I don't recall. <laughs> like I think there's a second song that is based off of it that he then starts. Mm-hmm. Um Also, isn't isn't that kind of a a racial yes. like a racist thing? It is. <laughs> yeah, okay. It is. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't want to. Because I liked Archer, huh? I just got it because I liked Archer. Yeah, it. It's definitely. It's definitely racially in. Uh, it's definitely racially in. In a. Uh, insensitive. Yeah. <laughs> so I just I want to point that out to everyone. We know. We know. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're aware. We're, we're well fully aware. aware. We're fully aware. Don't at us. That was it. Was kind of the point of the the whole joke in the first place, because mm-hmm. the the irony is that Archer is remarkably not racist. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> there was a. Did you see the? Okay, so because we're at the end of the episode, um, and people who are trying to avoid this have now successfully avoided it, uh for 55 minutes. Uh, I just want to say that if you don't want to hear anything talked about the coronavirus or COVID-19, you can stop now. Cause I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Uh-huh. Um, 
So just want to give people the like out because I know that there's some people who are looking for content that just doesn't have it in it. But I do want to talk about it a little bit um, because if I don't talk about it a little bit, I feel like I'm doing a great dis- disjustice to our platform as a whole. <laughs> Considering the fact that it's the biggest news ever. <laughs> um, so I saw a video of, uh, what is it? Simon Pegg and the other guy from Hot Fuzz. Okay. Who is that? Uh, Nick Frost. Nick Frost. So they redid the scene from uh, Shaun of the Dead where they, they, mm-hmm. they talk on the phone and they're like, planning out what they're doing yeah uh but they redid the scene as though they're talking about the they're talking about planning for the coronavirus that's pretty good (laughs) and it's phenomenal it's watch it it's really good not only that but it actually has some really good advice in it Mm -hmm. for what it's worth so definitely give it a watch it's funny it's good uh my favorite bit about it though is in Shaun of the Dead, there's a scene where Nick Frost's character says gay yeah. in response to something. Simon Pegg, they, they like kind of redo it, like re-joke about it. And Simon yeah. Pegg was like, no, that, was, that wasn't that was a joke about people being gay. That was a joke about the fragile masculinity of... <laughs> 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 where it was like, Context matters, and what people are trying to do matters when it comes to humor. Humor's weird. Mm-hmm. Humor's very difficult. Uh, because, what's his name? Um, George Carlin, for example, was on like the cutting edge with his whole word you can't say on television thing. Yeah. I've heard most of them on television now. I remember the first time I saw the George Carlin bit. The uh, well, at the time it was the seven words you can't say on television, and yep. um, I think the list grew uh, as he got older. But yeah. at the time, at the time when I first saw it, George Carlin was to me only Mr. Conductor on Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> and then I went downstairs, and my dad was watching HBO. <gasps> oh, and no. I saw Mr. Conductor with a filthy mouth and i was like what is happening mr. Oh, Con- mr conductor mr conductor oh my god so for me the first uh, encounter that i had with george carlin was bill and ted's excellent adventure because i didn't watch nice. i didn't watch uh thomas tank engine um but yeah <laughs> It's really great when you see someone who you think of as more wholesome, not. Like, Eddie Murphy's <laughs> original stand-up is... Uh-huh. It's a... Uh, not for children? Not for children. Yeah. Not for children. And he's made so many movies for children. Oh, yes. Uh, similarly, I think... No, no, no. Um... Robin Williams was pretty clean pr- throughout his whole career. I think he was, he was still really good, though. Yeah. He was he was a pretty clean dude, because he was more pe- playing off just absurdity than anything yeah. else. Anyway. Um, um, also, if you're at home... Which uh, you are, probably, hopefully. Just avoiding the outdoors, Joe Yepard of the band 3, my favorite uh, musician... He's uh on Saturday three twenty eight doing a uh, a live show from oh, nice. home. Get that shit on Eventbrite because uh, he's good. <laughs> nice. Just so um when I see him around Halloween, sometime October last year, I I uh, saw their con- went to see him live again. Oh, you saw yeah. him live? Yeah. Where were they? They're good. They're at BSP. It was the really? Uh, yeah. BSP had some good acts before they. Well, they're not going to have good acts anymore. Well, no, because they're closing. Yeah. Also, I don't know how many people know that, but they're closing. They're turning into apartments. Yeah. Kinks is going to be weird. Yeah. Oh, well, Kinks is weird. weird stuff. Yeah. They're like a lot of, uh, well, the, the the bars and music venues are going away to turn into housing. What? Yeah. At a certain point, there's going to be nothing but housing then. I mean, right now it's nothing but bars, and uh, True. the bars are going away. 
and it's turning to housing. <laughs> like we're getting a lot of new housing uh very soon. Is there really that much of a housing requirement in Kingston though? I don't know. But where the I, parking garage used to be, here's some local talk. Where the parking garage used to be, where it's now. Just hey, a Brandon, we've lot. already we've already scared everyone out. Don't that's worry, gonna that's worry. gonna be housing. A couple of bars are turning into housing. They're adding new housing, and then uh, in uptown, and I think they're opening a few new hotels. Okay. So we've got that going for us. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I'll try to scare everyone away though. Yeah, I mean that's that's fair. Yeah. Um, like that scene in Step Brothers. Yeah, <laughs> the neighborhood's real great. That movie was phenomenal. We we saw that lo- we saw that in Regal Cinemas in Kingston, and yes. we saw uh, a lot of movies there. We saw a lot of movies. Doesn't exist anymore. Now it's a much nicer theater that I'm frankly yeah. quite worried about. Are you? Why? How so? I'm worried about them because they've only been around for a year. Yeah, and um. All of this stuff happening, all the movie theaters in New York State are closed. Yeah, but they're also like a major, like a big corporation. So like, that's fair. As long as they stick through it, they'll be good on the other end. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but I do want to say before we close out, not a joke. Um, be careful. Touch your face. Don't touch, touch your face. Knobs. Uh, don't be afraid. Soap's overrated. Soap is not overrated. Brandon, you're undermining my message. <laughs> you're undermining my message. Uh, don't be afraid, but, you know, be cautious. And uh, don't pretend that your immune system is invulnerable, even if you're a young adult. Uh, because there have it is. It's not. It it's not. It it's, might be. It, but it's not. It might be. But it's not. Touch a stranger's face. <laughs> Don't. Don't do any everything. Okay, actually, no, wait, wait, wait. This is good. Brandon, everything that you've just said is the opposite of what you should do. Yeah. Uh, Have but, someone feed you. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. That's a good idea, Brandon. That's yeah. a good idea. Anywho, just, just be careful out there, people. Play Twister with people you don't know. <laughs> now I'm remembering a bit from... Uh, <laughs> I'm remembering a bit from the Castlevania song by uh, Starbomb. We talk about playing two man twister. I mean, I play one man twister all the time, but anyway. Yeah, one man twister is weird. Anywho, uh, so in general, our website is cryptopediacast.com. Our Instagram is at cryptopediacast. Our Twitter is at cryptopediacast. Uh, if you want to email us, cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com, we have a Patreon. And let me just verify because I forgot to look it up last night when I was writing this. That mechanical keyboard, though, listen to that. Yeah, I, I can fix mine. I put mine on RMA because um, the escape key's broken. Oh. Uh, so, but the problem is uh, the company never responded to me. So I guess I just got a broken escape key. Um, <laughs> I mean, is it how? In what way is it broken? Uh, I have to like so. Basically, is it like a mechanical issue or is it an electrical issue? It cracked. Uh, So the plastic cracked, basically. See, somebody that definitely wasn't me while I was playing guitar, definitely that never happened. They, someone might have put some an IPA on my keyboard Mm. and and like emptied the contents into it. Uh, Was it one of the cats? I know Um, they have a problem. Yeah, we'll go with that. A cat put an IPA onto my keyboard, which is how my other one died, but I was able to disassemble it quickly, dry it out, <laughs> get it back together. I cracked it a little bit at uh, trying to rapidly disassemble it, but uh, she's working. So we do have a Patreon. Uh, people who donate $5 or more enough a month, um, they get they get shout-outs on every episode now. They uh, do. They are our jackalopes. They are Clay Sinclair, the person yes. who suggested this episode. And, and hey, OG jackalope. He's been hey. around for a long time. Well, here's the thing, too. Longer than is reasonable. I was going to do Wendigo this week, but the insanity of the world happened. 
but I mm-hmm. still did a, re- a request episode for you, Clay. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marty Von Party. Yes, and the Burge, Baron of Parties. The Baron of Parties. And uh, Bird Schneider. Yes, the hollowest of bones. I'm kind the of worried of bones. about Bird a little bit. Yeah. Um, really, it's mostly bone density related. Yeah, Bird, we're we gotta, worried. We got to get him some. We got to get him uh, some. Uh, some good seed. Some good seed with milk with in some, it. Some milk, milk some additional milk vitamins. Seed. Some milk, milk seed. seed. We'll, milk we're going to get some milk seed. We'll distribute that across our listeners. Yes. <laughs> Everyone gets milk seed now. Uh huh. Doesn't exist, but you get it. I mean, we'll uh, invent it. We'll invent it. Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. And if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in, and they might be made into an episode like this one. Yes. You could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is warriorb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediascast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon, capital C, capital B. Also, donkey hands. It's been a while since we talked about it. That's a, yeah. a Dungeons and Dragons uh, reference from a campaign we had together. Not a weird sex thing. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. But it was a weird sex thing for that character. I mean, it was a donkey with human hands. Yeah, it's it's by How definition. Could it not be? It's by yeah. definition a weird sex thing. <laughs> um, I'm on Instagram at mu2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. His Instagram is at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com. And his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. You had, you had nine sources for this? Yeah. Yeah, I did. That was, that was, that was many sources. Yeah. Yeah, Brandon. It was. <laughs> it sure was uh two of them are tabloid articles uh one of them is that zombie fish thing uh-huh. i have a link to the greenland shark and a link to the tizarek because i wanted statistics on them yeah uh, one of them is a is the, the the one like the ap article on this one of them's the strange evidence video the first one's the original video and then there's one more that was just another like article about it okay I was I, surprised. I was scrolling down. And I was like, "Wait, where did all these come from?" Oh no, I have. Yeah, I use a lot of sources every episode. There's, I do two of them, well, except for the two that are coming up because I had really like one primary source um, yeah. that I go into. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually impressed that I was able to finish this last night because there it, we could have done. I could have like. I was happy that you were able to uh, get one together when he texted me saying like, hey, so I'm still working on it, but I just happened to already have two done. Brandon, 